Hi, let me talk about a work I presented at the Engineering Mechanic Institute conference in 2016 on interaction ground potentials between calcium silicate hydrate nanoparticles at the molecular level. This work is about cement, which is the glue in concrete materials. Cement is a heterogeneous material constituted of many phases. On the top left, we can see a cartoon of a cement paste after the setting. Each color on this cartoon corresponds to a given phase, while blue is for liquid water, pink is for Portlandite, purple is for anhydrous cement, and yellow is for calcium silicate hydrates, or CSH in the notation of the cement industry. As observed in the cartoon, CSH is the most abundant phase. This is the binding phase that glue together all other phases. CSH is a porous material and its stoichiometry is characterized by the calcium to silicon ratio. Now, if we do a zoom on the yellow phase in the cartoon and we go down to the metal scale, that is to say between 2 and 100 nanometer, we will observe the mesostructure. structure. This structure is important since it is responsible for the mechanical properties of the material. This mesostructure results from the aggregation of smaller particles. Organization among those particles is fully driven by interparticle forces. If we now focus on those smaller particles, we know that they have heterogeneities on their morphology and surface charge. Indeed, each particle is the result of a stack of CSH layers. Those layers are made of a calcium oxide octahedral layer in between silica chains with a finite size. They have a high surface charge which is compensated by calcium counterions. Thus, CSH are strongly coupled systems with strong ionic correlations. In order to study the formation of CSH mesostructures, the natural approach is to employ mesoscale simulations. Note that in our approach, the mesoscale is considered between 2 and 100 nanometers. In a previous work at the mesoscale performed by Terson et al, they developed an approach that was valid for system with a high concentration of particles. It gave a good description of strongly coupled systems, and a good description of heterogeneous particles. Particularly, they showed the influence of the volume fraction and forces among particles. Nevertheless, this mesoscale approach is developed in the frame of the primitive model, where water is considered as a continuum. In fact, mesoscale approaches considering water as a continuum are usually valid for distances among particles greater than 1 nanometer, but for distances below 1 nanometer, where the molecular nature of water becomes non-negligible, we do not know. Therefore, we need to explore the lower scale by using molecular modeling. In our approach, we consider a molecular model including only two explicitly described particles of CSH. The particle size has been chosen to be roughly 5 nanometer, and the volume fraction of particles is 6%. Three configurations of those particles were considered. We name them A, B, and C. In configuration A, the two particles are exactly the same. In configuration B, the top particle has been rotated by roughly 90 degrees. The goal of this configuration was to show the effect of misorientation of silicate chains at the particle surface. In configuration C, the top particle has been rotated out of plane in order to form an inverse T-shape when the particles are in close contact. We employ Grand Canonical Monte Carlo for our simulation at a temperature of 300 Kelvin and a relative humidity of 10%. With such technique, the particle pair is in an open system where the number of water molecules can fluctuate as a function of the interparticle distance. We run about 60 simulation points for each configuration, one simulation point being a given distance among the particles. The location of particle is fixed in the course of one simulation point. Based on our simulation data, we employ the following formula to derive the interaction ground potential between particles. In this formula, we need the mean force between particles for each distance as well as the number of molecules and the chemical potential. Here, we reported the number of water molecules on the top left figure and the mean force on the top right figure as a function of the interparticle distance. The black curve stands for results obtained with configuration A, where the interacting particles are the same. 
The red curve stands for results obtained with configuration B, where the top particle has been rotated by roughly 90 degrees in the plane. The blue curve stands for results obtained with configuration C, where the top particle has been rotated by roughly 90 degrees out of plane. When looking at the water content within the simulation box, we observe the presence of a maximum of water molecules. This maximum corresponds to the same interparticle distance for configurations A and B, but it is shifted to a higher interparticle distance for configuration C. In the aforementioned case, the shift is due to the particle aspect ratio. For the mean force, we observe a repulsion path when particles are close to each other, then a minimum is reached before to rise again on a slower rate. We found the same behavior as in the figure showing water content, that is to say, the location of the minimum of force is the same for configurations A and B, while it is located at a larger distance for configuration C. Furthermore, from the mean force data it is possible to compute mechanical properties like the adhesion force, the young modulus and the rupture strain and then compare them to experiments or previous simulations. In such a way, we found a really good agreement between our simulations, anatomic force microscopy experiments and the adhesion force for configurations A and C. However, the adhesion force for configuration B is far lower from what is observed experimentally, about 12 times lower. We attributed this discrepancy to the misorientation of silica chains at the particle surfaces. We also observe a lower young modulus for configuration B with respect to configurations A and C. On the one hand, if for the latter configurations the young modulus is close to what is found in simulation works for fluid and CSH, values are higher than experimental ones. On the other hand, the young modulus for configuration B is lower than experimental values. Again, we attributed this fact to the misorientation of silica chains for configuration B. Beyond that, we think that the nature of the contact and the number of contacts among particles can influence the value of the young modulus. We considered in this work only to explicitly describe CSH particles, instead of many particles as observed experimentally. Finally, we computed the rupture strain and we found that values for configurations A and C, that is to say, 4% and 1.79% are in fair agreement with previous simulations for fully done CSH. The biggest strain needed to break the particle pairs is for configuration A, then come configurations C and B. Overall, those mechanical properties are in good agreement with previous simulations and experiments, and they serve as a validation of our computations and our approach. From the previous data, we generated the interaction ground potentials. On this slide, I show you the result for configuration A. Nevertheless, we observe the same shape of the interaction ground potential for all configurations. Indeed, at short interparticle distance the potential is repulsive, then it goes down to a minimum prior to rise to a local maximum. This shape of the potential is very interesting since we can derive energy barriers to break or to form the pair of particles, allowing us a better understanding of its stability. We fitted our data with Lennard and Sukawa potential in order to make our data usable at the mesoscale. Fitting curves provided properties close to simulation data. We reported in two tables properties for the three configurations considered in this work. Table on the top provides data directly derived from our simulations, while table on the bottom provides data derived from the fits. Properties from simulation data show that even if configuration C has the lowest minimum, the pair of particles is easier to break than the pair in configuration A, which has the second lowest minimum energy. Therefore, configuration A is the most stable configuration among those studied in our work. As can be seen in the bottom table, fits with Leonard John's Yukawa potential well reproduce the aforementioned behavior. As a conclusion, in this work we provided atomic scale inputs to refine mesoscale simulations in order to take into account the molecular nature of water at subnanometric interparticle distances. We produced data for a volume fraction of particles of 6% at room temperature and 10% of relative humidity. We validated our data through the computation of mean forces between particles. We found a good agreement with experiments. If you want to learn more about this work, please check our paper published in the Nanoscale Journal in 2016.